To safely work on electrical projects in your home, you'll need to be able to turn off circuits at the breaker panel. But how do you do that when the breaker panel is not labeled at all or poorly labeled? It's Dave from Upgrade Your Home DIY and I have felt the frustration you've felt trying to figure out which breaker to turn off. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to identify the breaker for any outlet or light in your home without having to switch every breaker on and off and reset the microwave clock again and again. Yeah, see, that's what I used to do too. Before I discovered the ideal 61-534 circuit breaker finder. So let me show you how this works and two bonus features that I think make this a great investment for DIYers like you and I who want to do some electrical projects around the house and need to make sure we have the correct breaker turned off. The ideal circuit breaker finder consists of two pieces. The first piece is called the transmitter. When you plug it into the outlet you want to find the breaker for. That's when you discover the first bonus feature. The transmitter is also an outlet tester that will tell you if the outlet is correctly wired. This can help troubleshoot outlet problems. It also allows you to test if a GFCI outlet is working properly, because it has a button that simulates a ground fault. If the GFCI is working properly, it will trip and shut off power to the outlet. So you don't need to buy a separate outlet wiring tester. Just use the one that's already included with this package. Okay, back to finding out which breaker this circuit is on. Now the second part is the receiver, and the receiver needs a 9-volt battery to operate. Plug the transmitter into the outlet. Check that it lights up. Then go to the breaker panel. Turn on the receiver away from the panel or other power source. Let it go through the self-test until both lights are lit. Run the receiver slowly over each breaker on each side of the panel with the flat part of the nose of the receiver against the breakers. Now you're going to hear some beeps. That's okay. This first pass is just calibrating things. It doesn't indicate which big breaker controls the power for that outlet. Once you've finished the first pass, then do another slow pass over the breakers. As you go down, listen, because the one breaker that beeps is the breaker that controls the outlet. Keep going over each breaker until you find the one that beeps. Once you find the one that beeps and the light flashes, then stop, make sure that it's the one that you identified. Yes, it is. Go ahead and turn that breaker off. Check that the transmitter now has no lights showing. Now, if you have a pony panel or a sub panel like we do, you may get the beep on the breaker for that pony panel. So if that happens, just make sure you pass over the other breakers, making sure that it's, it's not one of those. Then go ahead, turn the receiver off. Wait 10 seconds, and then what you can do is go to the pony panel, turn the receiver back on, let it go through its self-test, and then do the both passes on the breakers in that pony panel. So do your first pass, going over each of the breakers to calibrate it. Once you're done that first pass, then do a second slow pass over the breakers again to find the breaker in that sub pin that beeps, indicating this is where the transmitter is. And then turn it off. Now the second bonus feature is actually in the receiver. After you turn it on and it goes through its self-test, you can then use it as a non-contact voltage tester. So what this means is you can move it close to a wire and it will beep to tell you whether that wire is live, whether it has power flowing through it. Turn the receiver on, it goes through the self-test, both lights are on. The left wire does not have power, and when I touch it, both lights stay on, no beeping. The right wire does have power, so now when I touch it, the green light goes off and the beeping, indicating this wire is live. The receiver can sometimes switch from non-contact voltage mode to the receiver mode. You see the red light turn off? It has switched modes. Just turn the receiver off and start it again to continue using it as a non-contact voltage tester. So you don't have to buy a separate non-contact voltage tester because the ideal 61-534 package already includes it. 
So that's four testers in one. An outlet wiring tester, a GFCI tester, a non-contact voltage tester, and a circuit breaker finder. So you could spend money on each of those individually or just get this one package and you get all four of them. I'll put a link in the description down below so you can pick this up yourself. So that covers how to use the IDEAL 61-534 to identify the breaker for any outlet in your home. But what about lights? Lights don't have outlets. So how can we identify the breaker for a light switch? We can simply by temporarily converting that light into an outlet. Now that takes a couple of other items which I'll show you in these two demonstrations. No, I have turned off the light in these demonstrations at the light switch, not at the breaker. Because of course we're trying to find which breaker it is. I consider this to be safe because I think about it just like you know changing a burnt out light bulb. If you don't consider this to be safe, if you're unsure, please make sure you hire a qualified licensed electrician to do this for you. Now the first example is when we have a standard light bulb. Could be in a very simple lamp holder that's uh, in the ceiling, or it could be a light fixture. So let's see how it works there. In this situation, we're dealing with a standard light bulb socket. So this is a very simple lamp holder uh, example, but any light fixture that uses standard light bulbs, this will work for. So I'm going to start by taking the light bulb out of the holder here. And then what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this. This is an adapter that takes a standard light bulb socket and gives you a three-prong plug. So what this will do is it will allow us to take our transmitter and put it into this socket. And what I've normally found is, is that it's easier so you don't stress the, the light bulb holder or your light fixture, is to put the transmitter into the adapter first. And now we've got it together first, and then I'll screw that into the light bulb socket, whether that's in a light fixture or in this case just a, a simple lamp holder. If the light doesn't have the space for the adapter and transmitter to be screwed in, you can attach a three-prong extension cord to the adapter, screw that in, and then plug the transmitter into the extension cord. Now that that is installed, I can go and turn on the switch for this lamp. So now we have the transmitter through the adapter into this light bulb holder. And when I zoom in here, you'll notice that there's only one light showing, one green light. What that indicates on the legend that's on the transmitter is that there's an open ground. Now that's fine because most of these lamp holders or light fixtures don't necessarily have a ground attached to them, but it's still fine. And what it's doing now is it's transmitting that signal that we can use the receiver at the breaker panel. Now the second example is where you don't have a standard light bulb. So this is Today, uh, a lot of the cases where we have the LED pot lights or you have uh, another light fixture that's attached to an octagonal box in the ceiling. So let's, how, let's see how we can use this in those situations. If you don't have a standard lamp holder, then what you're going to have to do is to expose the black and white wire for a particular light fixture. Now, again, I'm just using this as an example here, the, the black and white coming out of an octagonal box. I'm just holding a an envelope up behind it so you can see the black and white wires easier. And what you're going to do, this might be an LED light, it might be another type of, of light fixture that you take down, but you get those wires exposed. And then what you can do is use uh, this device, which is a pigtail lamp holder. So what it has, it has the standard lamp holder here where a, a standard bulb will go in, and then it has a black and a white wire and what I've done is, is I have used the straight WAGO connectors in order to be able to connect these to the wires from that particular light. So I'll go ahead and connect each of the black and white wires, making sure they're securely connected here. And now what I've done is, is I have created for myself the lamp holder. Now I can use what I did before is simply taking that adapter and the transmitter and connecting it here. So I have my transmitter 
and the adapter together like we saw before and I simply connect it here into this lamp holder and now I've created the transmitter going through the adapter through the pigtail into the wires which will go back to the breaker panel. So let me go turn the switch on and we can see this. So the switch is now on and you can see that one green light which is indicating again the open ground like we saw before but now this transmitter is sending the signal down this circuit and we can go back to the breaker panel and see which circuit this particular light switch is connected to. So you see me using a WAGO connector here in this example. If you're not familiar with WAGO connectors, I suggest you check them out. They come in two, three, five slot versions, and the one I'm using here, which is the straight line version. And what they do is, is they make it easy to make connections, especially between stranded wires and solid wires. The pigtail connector has stranded wires. The ceiling box has solid wires. If you're doing work with light fixtures in the ceiling, these can be a real game changer and very, very helpful. So I'll put a link in the description down below if you want to check out a variety pack that has some of all of these different types of WAGO connectors. With the Ideal 61-534 Circuit Breaker Finder, you can identify pretty much every circuit in your home, whether it's plugs or lights. You can test outlets to see that the wiring is correct. You can test GFCI outlets to make sure they're working properly. And you get a non-contact voltage tester. So you can see if a wire has power running through it. Now, yes, it's more expensive than some other devices, testers you might see out there. But I think it's a great investment if you're going to be doing some electrical projects around your house and you want a versatile solution that will work in many different situations. I think this is a great complement to the simple tester I showed in this video. With these two, you can safely tackle almost all the electrical projects you want to in your home. Please click the like button so other DIYers can find this video and learn about this versatile testing tool. Subscribe to the channel so you get notified when I publish a new video. Thanks again for watching.